On today's show, meet a fish artist who works round the clock crafting some very interesting pieces of Americana. There is. Next, meet a young man who turned his love of fishing into part of his high school day. And it's that time of year to get outside and enjoy the snow, so hit the trails with Laura Shera as she takes up snowshoeing. And our Minnesota Bound Classic takes a look back at some not so ordinary ice fishing houses. In fact, they are downright amazing. Those stories and more next. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Ron is taking a break this week. I have a feeling he's off in a much warmer climate, taking a little vacation. He'll be back next week. Okay, on to the show. You know, in this part of the country, there are a pile of award-winning woodcarvers, but none of them has a story like Rick Whittier's. Rick Whittier fishes. This is why I do what we do. But never did he ever think angling could keep him awake at night. With uh, liking fishing, it just fell into place. Rick Whittier's story starts in a dusty North Dakota basement. This is white pine. Down here, Rick and his wife grind away their days, so to speak. Every day I start working around noon. And from there, I, I work till anywhere from five to seven in the morning. Boy, he doesn't like to let me sleep. <laughs> At least 16 to 18 hours, seven days a week. See, the Whittiers have become rather well known for their up all night antics. It is the art of the decoy. Well, we were hoping we were gonna be semi-retired. That didn't work very well for us. Woodworking always has been a release for me. Yes, yes, through the law enforcement years. Way back, Rick, a deputy sheriff, met the dispatcher. They eventually married and worked nights. When the Whittiers hung up their law enforcement caps, Rick retired to the basement. Fish decoys suddenly appeared from raw blocks of wood. I have pictures of some of his first decoys. <laughs> They're not nice looking. That was then, this is now. People come week after week down here to see what I do and, and after nine years I find it boring and I don't understand why, why can't you do this? Well, the paint booth might provide an answer. Watch this. In a matter of seconds, Rick uses plain old cans of color to mist life into his decoys. No special tools, no airbrush. No, I've never used one. I don't know how. <laughs> A lot of people think I'm crazy, but I love what I do, and I love the fact that these guys want them and that they're using them. <laughs> that might be an understatement. On a regular basis, Australia, Britain, South Africa, China. The Whittiers now ship decoys worldwide. I make a minimum of 200 a month. Which is why unbelievable demand forced Rick to share his hobby with White Connie. So he tried to teach me how to carve and he said, no, you were right, you, I can't teach you. I never used to allow her down here, but yeah, you know, she's really good at what she does now. Connie also tank tests each fish. Rick finishes with eyes and an autograph. 
They are all signed. Yes, they are. Every one of them and dated. And then they ship off to faraway places out there for anglers and collectors alike. We're putting a lot of decoys out there and they'll always be out there. They'll always be talked about uh, whether I'm here or gone. It's more important for me that they use them. It really is. That they're enjoying them. It's functional art. <laughs> Funny thing, even during late night hours, another order, the phone still rings. Maybe they need a secretary. If you apply, <laughs> just plan on working nights. We are absolute night owls, without a doubt. My hours are a little odd. My hours are a little odd. Whoa! <laughs> Stay with us. A young angler gives away his best high school secret, a great oh. fishing spot right in the heart of the Twin Cities. There he goes. <laughs> Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Connecticut. Ice Force. And by Seven Clans Casino. You know, a lot of people in this state dream of someday becoming a fishing guide. Well, not long ago, I met a young man by the name of Andrew Osowski. He wanted to share his passion and his most secret fishing spot. There's something special about secret fishing spots. A barren lake no one else seems to know. Every winter, we try and show a favorite of our secrets, but on this day, we worry we won't even make it to the lake. Sketchy? We give up. Time for a backup. I'm just gonna stay out of the water with my house. Meet Andrew Osowski, puller of the sled and keeper of this lake secrets. We're good. Round Lake. <laughs> it better be a good one. The things we do for fish. See, Andrew is a budding fishing guide wannabe. And Round is his lake. We cut a few holes and set up the otter and get to fishing. Here it comes. Yeah. You get him? I got there him. There you go. So why round? Oh, and he came off right there oh. at the hole. The fish are one big reason. Ooh. Oh, Look at yeah. That. And that building over there is the other. Round Lake sits smack dab across the street from Eden Prairie High School. Andrew used to stare out classroom windows, wondering. Every day would come from lunch. We'd have our car parked right over here. We had a couple rods. We'd walk right over the little bridge here down in front of the trees, and we'd fish bass every day. There's two, two school kids that loved to fish. It was, it was a little hidden gem. When Andrew wanted to fish and protect. There is. He earned his Boy Scout Eagle Award with a conservation project on round. My Eagle project was fishing line recycling bins. You'll notice the white tube at the boat launch. I went out and I put seven recycling, uh, fishing line recycling bins around Ian Prairie at all the lakes and launches. Scouts collect that recycled fishing line. The result, clean lakes, good fishing. You bumped it. It's a lot of bass, a lot of bass. Today, everyone seems to catch them. There's a metro little bass for you there. Snowplow buddy, Jeremy Frechette, catches a dandy. It was a, it was a hoot on two pound test line, so it was a, uh, it's always a little bonus fish. It's all about having fun and catching is just, uh, that's just the bonus part of it, so. Well, in the next fish he hooks. Another one. This big bass leaves Jeremy a little bit speechless. Just a grin, ear to ear. Exactly why Andrew shares his secret lake. 
If you can do a job that you love to do, and you can go out fishing and go do that every day, it's not a job. It's just a fun time. Wow, Andrew may not be an actual fishing guy yet. Whoa! <laughs> it sure seems he's got the M.O. down pat. Oh, he popped off there. Oh, there he is. Well, he is. Oh. most of the time. There he goes. <laughs> That's an adrenaline rush. I'll get you warm on any day. Let's do it again. <laughs> Coming up, ever wonder if you're a natural on snowshoes? Well, Laura Shera walks you through snowshoeing 101. That's next. Closed captioning is brought to you by By the Yard. Up next, a favorite segment of ours called Getting Started. This week, Laura Scher is out enjoying one of the most fun and oldest winter sports. Snowshoeing. In the past, snowshoes made of wood and rawhide were essential tools for fur traders, trappers, and anyone whose living depended on the ability to get around deep areas of snowfall. Today, Snowshoes are mainly used for recreation and just enjoying some winter fun in the snow. But how do you get started? The folks at L.L. Bean are here to help us out. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Laura. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. I am looking to get outside and get some exercise, and I heard that snowshoeing is the perfect way to do that, but I'm not quite sure how to get started. Is there some suggestions you can give me? Absolutely, yeah, you've come to the right place. We have a lot of different kinds of snowshoes at L.L. Bean. You know, really, to start, where do you plan on snowshoeing at? Well, to get started, I'll probably stay local, so I'm not planning on hitting the mountains anytime soon, but of course, it's Minnesota, so I'm guessing I might hit some deep snow. You're gonna need three things to get started snowshoeing. You need snowshoes, poles, and some nice winter boots. So let me first show you the winter walkers. These are our most popular model. This is a real nice introductory snowshoe. There's some basic parts to it. You have the deck, the binding, the frame, and the crampons, which are gonna keep you from slipping. Um, you basically just tuck the front of your boot in there, into the front of the binding, tighten up the rear part of the binding, and then clasp over the top. Tighten everything up, and you have a nice secure fit. The third thing you need is a nice pair of snowshoeing poles. This is our winter walker model. This is a telescoping pole, which basically means that a user can adjust it to any height they want. Okay, Anthony, now if I really fall in love with snowshoeing and want to hit the mountains, can I still use my winter walkers, or do I need a different type of snowshoe? The Pathfinder snowshoe is made exclusively for L.L. Bean by the Tubbs Company. It has a different binding, the frame is a little bit wider, and it also has different crampon orientation and position on the deck of the snowshoe. We also have the MSR Revo snowshoe, which is an ultra lightweight snowshoe, and this comes in a men's and women's model as well. Very lightweight, as you can see, different features, different crampons, uh, traction on the sides as well as in the middle, and this is good for different ice and snow conditions as well. So I have my snowshoes, boots, and poles, but I also understand L.L. Bean gives lessons? We do at L.L. Bean. Uh, we not only like to sell gear to people, but we like to show them how to use it. So we have clinics on every Tuesday and Thursday on uh, topics like snowshoeing basics and local places to snowshoe. And we also offer discovery courses on snowshoeing every Saturday and Sunday all winter long. That sounds like a ton of fun. Can I come along? Yeah, sure. Let's go. All right. Okay, I just left the store and I have my snowshoes, my walking poles, and most importantly, I have Siri here from L.L. Bean's Outdoor Discovery Schools to show me how to use these. Well, welcome, Laura. It's really easy to snowshoe. We'll just put our snowshoes on and then we'll go over some basics. Ready. All right, Siri, am I all good here? Now your feet are twice the size that they normally would be, so make sure when you're walking that your feet are nice and far apart. Um, and we've added these poles so we can test out the snow and see how it is. So just make sure like you're walking, you're just swinging opposite foot with your opposite arm. So pretty much just go ahead and walk. Go ahead and walk. All right, here we go. This is such great exercise too. It really is actually. You'll find it as you do it more and more. So 
there you have it. If you're looking for an easy way to get outside and enjoy the winter months, snowshoeing just may be your ticket. But most important, just get outside. This week, our classic takes a look back at some ice fishing houses that are, well, first place champions, and you'll see why. Kind of just did it as a kind of a joke. I just add cold water every now and then, take a little out and add some. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Tracker Boats and by Starkey Hearing Technologies. So these days, permanent ice houses are big business, pretty high-tech stuff out on our frozen lakes. This week's classic takes us back several years to a time when ice house builders still had big dreams. Ice fishing, the season of suffering. Is that what you think? Well, not every angler is uh, roughing it. In previous contests, winters have ranged from architectural wonders to fishing holes surrounded by opulence. As you can see, ice anglers love comfort. Comfort which includes outhouses, of course. Inside the bathroom here, we've got a stainless steel urinal. And we also have a sit-down potty for the ladies with a nice, nice cushy seat. Remember this winter? Sleeping room for nine with a sauna next door? The runner-up in the 1999 contest was like Martha Stewart meets the Ice Age with a full kitchen that Martha would love. Why, she could cook and fish at the same time. Yeah. Yep, got him. All oh, right, nice one too. A fella named Cowboy was the winner in 97, a cabinet maker, cowboy-like detail in his three-room ice shanty, including deer antlers for door handles. This is my kitchen. I got a full-size stove. You can cook a turkey or a roast or whatever. Got a microwave. This is where the card playing goes on. <laughs> and actually, this drops down into a queen size bed. This is Cowboy's Den. Uh, it's, um, it's where I do my, all my fishing. Couch makes into a hide bed to sleep two more people, so I can sleep six in here, actually. And over here is my TV, where I watch Minnesota Bound uh, every Sunday night. In all this luxury, why sometimes the fish even bite? Probably anxious just to see the place. There you go. There's a Mille Lacs perch. Nice jumbo. Nice, nice jumbo, jumbo Mike. Job well done. Yeah. All of which brings us to the newest ultimate winner nestled on sort of frozen Mille Lacs. This winning entry sports a patriotic decor along with the usual <clears throat> uh, fishing amenities. Seven fishing holes, satellite TV, cooking stove. Owner Al Goldbranson said he wanted a cozy house. So he installed a complete fireplace and mantle. Everybody thought it was kind of goofy that I was going to put a full-size fireplace in a fish house, but now, you know, everybody that sees it really enjoys it. Now, fresh bait is important, so there's a fully stocked aquarium. Kind of just did it as a kind of a joke. I just add cold water every now and then, take a little out and add some or throw some ice in there, snow. It works so good, I just kept doing it. <laughs> but what makes this year's winter special is the extra work, making the house accessible to all, even their physically challenged angling friends. Step on the outside folds down and kind of turns into a small ramp. And we can just push them right in and out, and um, he loves to fish. So put another log on the fire, stare at a hole in the ice until you catch a fish. If not, who cares? It's fishing the ultimate way. <laughs> See what I mean? Big ideas, even back then. Well, it's that time. We've come to the end of the show. Don't forget, Ron and Raven will be back next week. In the meantime, be sure to introduce a kid <laughs> to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, 
catch us on the web at mnbound.com.